So uh, this, uh, as Jonathan pointed out, is a talk about protecting your dynamic analysis from the very kinds of multi-threading errors your dynamic al analysis might be trying to detect. Right? So uh, I call these metadata races. Analysis metadata uh, could suffer from data races as well, and this could compromise the accuracy of an analysis. So we need to protect against this. Uh, and so in this work, uh, we're targeting specifically dynamic data race detection for shared memory multi-threading. And we've de designed a system called FIB, uh, stands for Fast Instrumentation Bias, which is a cooperative ownership protocol that derives uh, a sense of ownership purely from the existing dynamic data race detector metadata and uses that to provide analysis synchronization that guarantees safety basically for free in the common case. Uh, we found uh, in our evaluation uh, that FIB uh, is up to 20% faster than the, the best prior approach uh, for this. So in the rest of the talk, uh, I'm going to review data races and give a little background on data race uh, detection, as well as this general idea of providing analysis atomicity, making sure our, our analysis actions are safe in a multi-threaded world. Uh, I'll give an overview of the highlights of our FIB system and protocol, uh, touch quickly on some adaptive optimizations we've included to work around a problematic case, uh, and then take a look at performance evaluation. Okay. So to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, in a shared memory multi-threaded program, a data race is two memory accesses to the same memory location by different threads where at least one is writing and there's no synchronization between the two. They're not ordered by synchronization. So data races are definitely errors. Uh, they cause unpredictable outcomes in modern memory models for mainstream languages. They have unintuitive or even undefined semantics, so literally anything can happen. Uh, we have reasonable precedents for what to do with this situation in the past. That is, well, let's make an explicit error out of it instead of a silent crazy error out of it. So specifically, I want data race exceptions. And I'm not the first to ask for this. This idea is 10 years old at this point. Uh, and if we had data race exceptions, this would really clean up the semantics of shared memory multi-threading. And it would improve the transparency of debugging greatly. Um, however, if we want to build that, we need a dynamic data race detector that is completely accurate. So we cannot tolerate any false positives, we cannot tolerate any false negatives, and we need it to be fast enough to run in production. So we're going to care both about accuracy, but also about eking, about eking out any performance anywhere we can in the dynamic, dynamic data race detector. So let's take a look at the job that the data race detector would have to do. Uh, if we're going to reason uh, about data races in a multi-threaded program, we'll use the happens before relation, which is a partial order over events in the execution that allows us to answer questions about which events, including memory accesses, are or are not ordered with respect to each other via synchronization or other means. So if we're going to build a data race detector, we need to track this relation. And to do that, we're going to track some notion of logical time. So the data race detector, as part of its analysis metadata, is going to have to keep what I'll call a synchronization history, which will allow us to answer analysis questions like, when did these two threads last synchronize with each other? The other job that a data race detector has is that on every memory access, we need to do a check to ensure that that memory access is well ordered with respect to all previous memory accesses to the same memory location. If our check resolves safely, uh, then we can record information about the logical time of this memory access so that future memory accesses can be analyzed with respect to this one. So for this, we need more analysis metadata. We need an access history for every memory location uh, in the program. OK, so that's our 10,000 foot view of what a dynamic data race detector needs to do. And so now we need to consider uh, the problem of how we insert these analysis barriers. So do a check, do an update before memory every memory access. So if we're not careful about how we do this, the checks and updates might actually interleave in a way such that two concurrent checks miss each other's updates. We've got, I'll call this a metadata race, and we've actually missed important information where our analysis really should say there's a data race here, uh, but we completely missed this and falsely assume this is a safe program. So um, anecdotally, actually, a lot of data race detector implementations make no effort uh, to solve this problem. And it's really not often a problem. Uh, if you're debugging, maybe it's OK if you miss one once in a while. Uh, but in the world of data race exceptions, that's unacceptable. We need an ironclad safety guarantee here. So we need to guarantee that we're always getting this right. So obviously, what we need is some notion of what I'll call analysis atomicity. Namely, that check and that update need to be atomic with each other. So we're checking and updating uh, the history atomically. So there's a simple way to do this. Let's just slap a lock around every access history, obviously. Uh, but this also comes with some fairly obvious costs, both in terms of 
time and space. It's really pessimistic, and it's especially pessimistic in the common case. Because most of the time what our multi-threaded programs are doing is not doing uh, intricate uh, interweaving uh, shared accesses, but rather doing thread local accesses or read shared accesses, where we really should not suffer any contention on the analysis metadata anyway. In those cases, all this blanket cost of synchronization everywhere is totally wasted. So with this motivation, we want to think about how to design a, a better way to do this. Um, so we've, we've built FIB, uh, Fast Instrumentation Bias, and this is a cooperative uh, ownership protocol, and it extends the Fast Track Dynamic Data Race Detector. So it's, it's inspired by the same sorts of ideas that underlie uh, systems like bias locking or cache coherence uh, or the uh, octet concurrency analysis tool, if you're familiar uh, with any of these. What we're going for here is we want to make the common case free. So we want completely free analysis atomicity for the common case. That is when we're analyzing thread local accesses, when we're analyzing read shared accesses, uh, the ownership state that will be in effect then is going to guarantee you can do that analysis completely free of synchronization. Now I have to pay somewhere, so in exchange, on rare events, like analyzing serialized sharing or re, uh, writes following read sharing, in, then ca in this case I'm going to have to incur a heavier cost. We're going to take a cooperative interthread coordination step that ensures a safe transition between a mode in which we can do completely synchronization free analysis uh, and, and something else. Right? So this is the basic idea of FIB, and we're, go we're going to go about implementing this in two parts. So the first step, is we're going to extend, uh, we're going to make a small revision to fast track to strengthen a key invariant in the access history such that a notion of ownership is just going to pop straight out of the access history. It's already there, we just need to see it. On top of that, we'll build a FIB protocol that uses a state system and some communication uh, to implement a safe version of this ownership protocol. Okay. I'm going to give a quick overview of Fast Track for background. I'm going to gloss over almost all of the detail of Fast Track, but just highlight the key things uh, that we need to know here. So Fast Track for its analysis maintains a synchronization history. So for every thread, uh, uh, we're going to maintain a set of epochs, logical times, at which this thread last synchronized with other threads in the system. The second part of the uh, uh, analysis metadata is the access history. So for every memory location, such as X or Y here, we're going to maintain both a last write, which is the logical time at which any thread last wrote to this memory location, and the last read or reads, the logical time or logical times at which threads last read this memory location. We need multiple last reads in some cases because we want to support concurrent reads in the system, which are completely safe. Now the details of how we do checking with this in Fast Track is something I'm going to gloss over uh, in this talk. But the key thing we want to understand is that when we're checking a read operation, we need to ensure that it is well ordered with respect to the last write. When we're checking a write operation, we need to ensure that it is well ordered with respect to all of the last reads in the access history, as well as the last write. And then if we have a data race free access, we should update our access history by recording either a new last read or a new last write. Again, glossing over a lot of details here. Okay. That's our quick intro to Fast Track. And now what we're going to do is revise the way that the Fast Track checks work just a little bit, as well as the updates, such that we can uh, promote this stronger access uh, history invariant, uh, just a little bit stronger than what fa uh, has, blah, 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 Fast Track currently has. So we're going to ensure that the last write, the recorded last write in any given access history, happens before all of the recorded last reads in this access history. Turns out it's fairly simple to ensure this is the case. We're just going to take the policy of updating the last read not just on reads, but also on writes. So every time we do any memory access, we're going to record the current logical time as if it's a last read. Again, glossing over some details with that. But at this point, those last reads really aren't last reads anymore. They're last accesses, if you will. But I'm going to continue to interchange those terms to continue con to connect to the fast track terminology. So now when we do checks in this system, because we have this nice transitive relation between the time of the last write and the times of last reads, we can actually do all of our checks with respect to times of last reads, which are really last accesses more generally. Again, the details of that uh, are not especially important. The key thing here is that by encoding this notion of last accesses, 
we now have baked in a notion of ownership directly into the access history. So we're going to say that the threads that last accessed uh, a memory location are the owners of that memory location. So we may have one or we may have multiple. Uh, then when we're doing checks uh, in the actual data race uh, detection analysis, you'll notice that all of the checks have to inspect that last reader, last accessor metadata anyway. So they're already checking who is the owner of this location. And whenever we update the last reader on every memory access, we're also updating who is the owner of this uh, location. So it's all there already. Uh, fast track ownership can make some optimizations of its own based on this uh, slightly stronger invariant. But what we're going to do is go a step further uh, with the FIB protocol, which layers on top of this. So with FIB, we're going to aim to get this ownership synchronization system for free. So we're going to build a state protocol on top of the information that is already there in the analysis metadata. It has two states, exclusive and shared. Right? So uh, an, an access history is in exclusive mode when there is a single last read or last access, if you will. The thread that performed that last read is the exclusive owner of this access history. And this exclusive state will grant it the permissions to perform any analysis using this access history completely free of synchronization. Any other thread wishing to perform analysis is going to have to go through other channels, which we'll get to in just a little bit. So for example, in this access history, where the last access is by thread u at time five, this is exclusive to thread u. So having seen exclusive, hopefully shared is uh, somewhat intuitive. Uh, we're in shared state whenever we have multiple last reads, and all of the threads that have a last read recorded in that last read set are considered shared owners of this shared state. This shared state grants all of those threads in that set the permission to analyze any read operations on this access history. But anything else, again, is going to have to go through other channels. So before we get to those other channels, I want to call out two key things about the way that this protocol is designed. First, there's no extra space required. Because we've derived the ownership sense directly from the pre-existing data race detection metadata, we don't have to store ownership as its own piece of information. So no space overhead. Second, there's no extra time required to check ownership in the common case. The common case is we're doing a thread local access in the thread that exclusively owns this location. Or we're doing a read shared uh, access in a thread that shares ownership of this location. So the checks that the data race detector is already doing, as we saw before, already check that ownership as part of the work they have to do. So we just get to use that for free here. Okay. So it's not all free. Let's consider the cases where we have to go through other channels. So for example, if we're in an exclusive state for this access history and another thread comes along to analyze a memory operation here, this is not definitely a data race, but we need to coordinate the analysis carefully. So in this case, uh, the, the new thread that's trying to uh, analyze an operation needs to do out of band coordination, communication, with the current exclusive owner thread. Now, depending on what kind of access is happening and also what the contents of the access history are, we may have different destinations for this transition. So for example, a write is always going to take us to a new exclusive state owned by the, the thread that performed the write. But a read may take us to a shared state. So for example, if a read is concurrent with the existing last read, what the dynamic data race detector is already going to do is transition into a state where we have two concurrent reads represented in the access history which maps exactly to having us in a shared state in our protocol as we derive it. So once we're in this shared state, both threads have ownership and they're both allowed uh, to uh, do any analysis of read operations on this access history. However, if any thread needs to analyze a write operation, that's not permitted under this state. And so a writing thread needs to coordinate with all owner threads in that shared ownership set in order to ensure a safe transition back to some exclusive state. There's one more case we have to worry about, um, and that is if a thread not currently in the shared ownership, ownership set comes along and needs to analyze a read operation, we want to add it to the shared ownership set, but to ensure that that doesn't interact poorly with a potential concurrent write transition, we're going to need a memory fence in the implementation uh, of that particular transition. This turns out to be pretty uncommon, and it's relatively low cost compared to the coordination. Um, and if we look at the cost of coordination overall, it's actually quite expensive, but it's also quite rare. 
so in fact, across all, all of the programs that we've observed, well, under 1% uh, of all memory accesses uh, involve this coordination. And for many programs, it's, it's quite significantly lower than that. But we still have this nice aspect that all the rest of the memory accesses are running their analysis completely free of synchronization overhead. So we've already got a reasonable match between the trade-offs uh, for common and rare cases in FIB and the costs that we're assigning to those as well. However, there's one problematic case here that we do need to deal with. Uh, so consider the scenario where two different threads are reading from the same memory location and it just so happens that they synchronize between each read and they're alternating back and forth. Every time, uh, according to the way that fast track works and the way that FIB works, that's going to incur a coordination transition, which is really expensive and a little bit silly because these threads are just reading, so we're really in a, share, a read shared uh, mode even though fast track is not recording it this way in its metadata. So to help solve this problem, uh, we've introduced a, uh, an optimization called predictive read sharing. Uh, and the idea here is a basic adaptive heuristic uh, so whenever we take a coordination transition out of an exclusive state, uh, based on the access history and based on the context of the current operation, we'll try to predict whether it might actually be beneficial to us to transition into a read shared state preemptively so that we can avoid this repeated uh, ping pong cost back and forth. That turns out to work quite well. So before we added this, um, we were suffering about 0.8% at most uh, uh, coordination transitions out of uh, exclusive mode, um, but that actually hurt us quite a bit uh, on several benchmarks. We've been able to lower that with preemptive uh, read sharing, often by an order of magnitude or more, uh, at the cost only of growing some uh, transitions out of shared mode uh, by a tiny bit. They're already so rare that it, it hardly matters. Okay. So that's a brief overview of our protocol and extensions to it. And so finally, I want to wrap up by uh, discussing our evaluation. So we implemented FIB and several other versions of FastTrack in JIX RVM. Uh, I'm going to discuss four implementation versions here. We have more in the paper that you can look at. The first is the original FastTrack algorithm with an optimistic CAS-based implementation of analysis synchronization. So we consider this sort of the best prior option that we have for, for safe analysis synchronization. We've also got a version of fast track ownership with a CAS based analysis synchronization policy. We've got FIB, including the preemptive read sharing optimization, and a completely unsynchronized version of fast track that is not safe, but gives us a good baseline to understand how far can we reduce the overheads of analysis synchronization. So we evaluated 10 Java programs on a large multi core machine, and uh, I want to call out a couple things uh, in a performance uh, result here. Uh, so first, on the x-axis here, I have our benchmarks along with the geomean off on the right. And on the y-axis, I'm showing you the runtime of each of these configurations, normalized to the runtime of a base version of JIX RVM that has no data race detection support. Right? So lower is better. One means as fast as JIX without data race detection. I want to call out two key things in this plot. So the first one is a comparison by, uh, between FIB and fast track with CAS synchronization. So this would be FIB versus sort of best prior work that we could uh, have. On average, we have a speed up of 5% uh, with FIB, but it goes up to 20% in some cases, uh, such as Zala. The second key thing that uh, I want to call out in this plot is a comparison between FIB and a completely unsynchronized fast track. Uh, so here, uh, this measurement tells us how well did we do at eliminating all of the costs of analysis synchronization. And on average, uh, FIB is 3.7% slower than a completely unsynchronized fast track. But on many of the benchmarks, it's actually well under 1%. And so our argument about giving free uh, analysis synchronization in the common case really has paid off here. And we've effectively eliminated most of the overhead of analysis synchronization for several benchmarks. So in summary, uh, we've attacked this problem uh, specifically in data race detection where we need to protect against metadata races in the uh, analysis metadata so that we can uh, provide full accuracy. Uh, to do that, we developed FIB, the Fast Instrumentation Bias Protocol. It's a cooperative ownership protocol uh, for analysis synchronization that derives its ownership states and much of its ownership logic directly from work and metadata that the data race detector already has. Uh, and in the common case, it provides analysis syn synchronization for free. Overall, we found that FIB uh, was up to 20% faster than our best prior approach.
Thank you. I'll take any questions.